My cousin started drinking beet juice and he said it really helped his erectile dysfunction. Today I want to show you three foods that can, in fact, be used as adjuncts in the treatment of erectile dysfunction. What scientific evidence is there about these foods and why do they often work? Hello, I'm Dr. Tiago and I'm a urologist here in Sao Paulo. To really understand this, without just memorizing things, you need to know how the erection mechanism works. Erection is a complex process that starts with a stimulus and goes all the way until the end of the, of the erection. So, when you have some kind of stimulus, whether it's visual, olfactory, auditory, tactile, or just desire, a signal leaves your brain, travels down your spinal cord, reaches the nerves in your penis, and tells the endothelial cells, which are the cells lining the blood vessels in the penis, to locally produce more nitric oxide, releasing nitric oxide into the bloodstream. Nitric oxide increases the production of a substance called cyclic GMP, and cyclic GMP causes vasodilation, increasing blood flow and making the erection happen. And for the erection to continue, this release has to be prolonged, okay? Because there's an enzyme called phosphodiesterase, which removes cyclic GMP, and it's working 24 hours a day. It has functional activity 24 hours a day. After all, your penis is almost always in a flaccid state. You only get an erection when you have some kind of stimulus. So what happens when you lose the stimulus? You decrease the production of nitric oxide, and phosphodiesterase is able to clear out all the cyclic GMP, the blood vessel contracts, and you lose the erection. To give you a quick analogy, a really simple one for you to understand. Imagine that getting an erection, filling the penis with blood, is like a box truck being loaded with boxes. I have people who go there and load the boxes into the truck, and I have one person who goes and takes the boxes out of the truck. That's the phosphodiesterase. When I have a stimulus, it's like increasing the number of people loading boxes into the truck. So, the phosphodiesterase can no longer empty the truck. The truck fills up, the penis fills with blood, and you have the erection process. If during sexual intercourse you lose the stimulus, lose the desire, lose the will. It's as if the people stopped working, and the phosphodiesterase is able to empty the truck again. This is where, for example, Tadalafil and Viagra act. Tadalafil and Viagra inhibit this enzyme called phosphodiesterase. It's like they block the person who empties the truck. So, just one or two people are enough to carry and load the truck with boxes, causing the erection process. But for you to have an erection, we need to have boxes, to have blood, to have substances, which are the precursors for the production of nitric oxide, of cyclic GMP, right? And that's where diet often comes into play. The first food I want to talk to you about here is pistachios. Pistachios are a food that's rich in L-arginine, which is an amino acid that's a direct precursor to nitric oxide. For our body to produce nitric oxide, it needs L-arginine. So, when I increase a precursor of a certain substance in our body, our body tends to maintain balance so it starts to increase the production of whatever that substance is a precursor for. So, if I increase L-arginine, I'll have an increase in nitric oxide, which will be stored there more, I'll have more supply to fill the truck, and then you're likely to see an improvement in erection. What do clinical studies show about this? We have very few studies on diet when it comes to erectile dysfunction because these studies are difficult to carry out, okay? It's not because people aren't interested, but because the study design for this is difficult. People often don't stick to the diets, people lie, and then the results end up being biased and aren't that reliable. One of the few studies I was able to find on this was one that analyzed 17 men, 
supplemented them with 100 grams of pistachios, and then evaluated both erectile function and penile Doppler in this population. And yes, there was an improvement in erectile function when these people had this supplementation of 100 grams of pistachios every day. So yes, there does seem to be scientific evidence that consuming foods rich in L-arginine, in this case, pistachios, also helps with erections. And that brings us to the second food, which is watermelon. Watermelon is a fruit rich in citrulline, and citrulline is a precursor to L-arginine, which, as you just heard, is a precursor to nitric oxide. And interestingly, when you give citrulline, you actually increase arginine levels more than by giving arginine directly. Why is that? Because when you give arginine, every time you consume something orally, that substance is absorbed by the intestine and undergoes what we call a first-pass effect in the liver, which metabolizes the substance. In the case of citrulline, it escapes this first-pass effect in the liver, and you end up increasing arginine levels more than by giving arginine directly. So watermelon. Because it's rich in citrulline, it raises arginine levels and also increases nitric oxide levels, which, as a result, also improves the process of erection. Are there clinical studies on this? Well, there are small studies, some of them controlled with placebo, that have shown that people who consume more foods rich in citrulline experience an improvement in erectile function. Got it? Besides that, Watermelon is rich in lycopene and also in other vitamins that are antioxidants and improve endothelial function. So it's like I'm giving more boxes and increasing the salary, so to speak, of the person who's putting the boxes into the truck. They work better, making the final process of filling the truck with boxes, filling the penis with blood, work better for this type of person. Deal? And finishing with the third one, beet juice, which we mentioned back in the introduction. Beetroot, unlike watermelon and pistachios, is rich in nitrate, and nitrates are converted into nitrites and then nitric oxide in our body, okay? In fact, people who do a lot of physical activity tend to drink beet juice before working out to get vasodilation during their workout, and according to experts in the field, there does seem to be some benefit for this type of population. As for beetroot itself, there are no studies conducted specifically on this issue of erectile dysfunction, okay? So, there aren't any studies that have evaluated whether eating beetroot or drinking beet juice improves sexual function, okay? But by analogy, since you're providing nitric oxide indirectly, yes, there might be some improvement. Notice that I mentioned three foods that are completely natural, okay? These are healthy foods, foods that can be eaten without any problem and obviously won't have any side effects unless you're allergic to one of them, okay? So, if you have erectile dysfunction, look for foods that are rich in these three substances I mentioned, beetroot, watermelon, and pistachios themselves, right? citrulline, arginine, and foods rich in nitrates, like beetroot itself, because they will indeed act as supporting agents in the treatment of your erectile dysfunction. Obviously, this does not replace conventional treatment. I always emphasize here that we need to treat the cause of erectile dysfunction, and the most common cause in patients over 45 or 50 years old is vascular. That's because the blood vessels no longer respond properly, you have less nitric oxide, vasodilation doesn't happen as it should, and the vessels are clogged. So, maintaining physical activity, getting enough sleep, and eating well, and also focusing on these foods, will help in treating your erectile dysfunction. Deal? If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Oh, and down in the description, there's a link to my maximum potency manual where I go a bit deeper into everything I talked about here in the video, and you can put a strategy into practice to improve your erectile function. 
That's it. I'm Dr. Tiago, and I'll see you in the next video.